Hello everybody, welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson and you're joining us for the Private Pilot Ground School. Today we're going to talk about performance calculations. Now remember when we do this, to make your studies successful, there's three components. Our first component is Epic's Private Pilot Ground School course online on Schoology. The second component is these videos that parallel that online course content. And then thirdly, you're going to want to review all of this content one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. So let's get started. What about these performance calculations? The performance calculation charts are the method that the aircraft manufacturer provides to the pilot so that we can have a reasonable prediction of how our aircraft is going to perform. These performance charts uh, typically come in two varieties. They come in the graph form or the chart form. Now, let's start with the graph form. When we do the graph method, I want you to think up, over, and follow the slope. Okay? Up, over, and follow the slope. So, on the screen behind me, you can see an example of a graph type performance chart. Now, this example we're using is from the PHAC, that is the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the PHAC 8083-25B as in Bravo. We are in Chapter 11, and this is Figure 1124. Now, notice in our figure, we have some given parameters for our example. Let's just pretend that we're operating our aircraft at a 2,000 foot pressure altitude where the OAT is a 22 degrees Celsius. Remember the OAT? That's not the oats I ate for breakfast. That is the outside air temperature. And I know that my aircraft's weight is 2,600 pounds. And I see by the windsock and the ATIS, I've got a headwind of six knots. I also have some trees as an obstacle on my departure that are 50 feet tall. So taking a look at our graph here, remember up, over, and follow the slope. We're going to start all the way to the left of the chart, and we're going to come in at the bottom and go straight up. Well, on the left-hand side in the bottom, what do we find? We find the temperature. Now, when I look at it, I see the temperature in Celsius is in 10 degree increments. And then each of the little lines, if I count them up, it looks like there's five in between 20 and 30. And there's five in between 30 and 40. So if I look at that carefully, each of those little lines must be, you got it, two degrees. So you can see on the chart here, we're entering at 22 degrees Celsius. So remember, up, over, and follow the slope. Okay, up to what? Well, as I come up from my 22 degrees Celsius, I'm seeing some pressure altitude lines on kind of a, a curve there. I'm going to come up to my pressure altitude, which in my example is 2,000 feet. Now here is where I go straight over. I'm just going to go straight over to the next chart. When I hit the next chart, notice on the bottom it says weight in pounds. So now I'm going to follow the slope. I'm going to follow the slope and I'm going to try to, I have to kind of carefully eyeball this. And notice that these black sloping lines are not parallel. I'm going to 
kind of follow the same slope that they're on. Where those black lines are steep, my slope will be steep. Where those black lines are shallow, my slope will be shallow. So notice on our example, my red line is kind of following that slope now down to where? My weight. So you see my weight is 2,600 pounds. Right up from my weight, that's where my slope stops. And once again, exit the chart. I'm just going to go straight horizontally to the next chart. What's the next chart? Look at the bottom. It's the wind component. Now, once again, I see the black sloped lines. Notice they're not parallel, but I'm going to kind of follow them. And I'm going to follow them till I get to the amount of headwind or tailwind. Now, in this case, notice I have six knots of headwind, so I'm following that slope down, and I get just above where the six would come straight up, and that's my point. Once again, I'm going to exit straight to the right. Now, before we leave that wind portion of the chart, notice the black slope lines are coming down for a headwind. And there's that little dashed black line going up. What's that? Those are tailwinds. Well, when would I ever take off with a tailwind? Well, ordinarily, if I had my choice, I would not take off with a tailwind. There may be some special circumstances where I might have to take off with a tailwind, and I'm going to want to know what those numbers are, and so I could calculate those here. But you're correct. Ordinarily, if at all possible, we are going to want to take off with a headwind. So here I am. Now I've exited the chart again horizontally, and now I'm on the last chart. The last one, at, if I look at the bottom, it says obstacle. Now notice how my red line just goes straight horizontally, right straight across, and it comes out just below a thousand. That is representing my takeoff ground roll. That number, oh, it looks like it might be 800, maybe 900 feet. That would be my ground roll to rotation, where my tires leave the runway. But in our case, we said that we had a 50-foot obstacle. We just happened to have a, a big maple tree out there about 50 feet tall. So we're going to, again, follow these black slopes. And if I follow that black slope up, you can see my red line. It's coming up to, oh, about 14. 1,800 feet or so. So my ground roll would be about 800, and my ground roll, including my climb over a 50-foot obstacle, would be about 1,400 feet. That's the graph method. Now, the chart method. Here is where we must learn to interpolate. Okay, okay, don't panic. Some of you who are not really great at math are thinking, oh no, not interpolation. Those of you who are very familiar with mathematics, you're saying, eh, that's no big deal. Now, whichever one of those learners you are, I want you to consult one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor, and you're going to find out interpolation is not that tough. There is another method that is described in some pilot operating handbooks. And rather than interpolate, the method they describe is just move to the next larger uh, value on the chart. Now, you're going to use both methods. So let's take a look at this chart. Here we have an example Again, we're in the PHAC, that's the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. It's the 8083-25B as in Bravo. We are still in Chapter 11, and this is Figure 
24. Now, before we get into our example, and before we start talking about how to use this chart, I want you to bear one thing in mind. This is critically important. Anytime we're looking at any chart or any graph of any kind, always, always, always check the notes and conditions. Now, if you look at the top of our example in the PHEC, you see we have both notes and conditions. Remember, your conditions that you're taking off and you're expecting performance for may not be an exact match to the notes and conditions on the chart. So we have to make adjustments for that. Talk to your flight instructor about this. Notice here we're showing a, uh, a condition with 10 degrees of flaps. We're on a level paved dry runway. We're using the short field takeoff techniques. So if any of those notes or conditions are not true for you, then these numbers might not be exact. All right, so now that we've cleared that up, let's take a look at our example. In this example, we have a pressure altitude of 3,000 feet, 30 degrees Celsius, and an aircraft takeoff weight of 2,400 pounds, and a headwind of 18 knots. So we start into our chart method on the left side of the chart. And notice it says weight. OK, let's come in at the weight. Our weight is 2,400, so that's where we'll enter. We cross over to the right to pressure altitude. It says pressure ALT in feet. And it says sea level, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, etc. You can see highlighted in green here is our pressure altitude of 3,000 feet. Then we're going to work our way horizontally to the current outside air temperature. Notice the temperature in our example is 30 degrees Celsius, and on the chart here you can see that highlighted in green, we have uh, under 30 degrees Celsius, 1,225 and looks like 2,400 feet over the 50-foot obstacle. Yeah, there you go. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, wait a minute, my flight instructor told me that my performance was not based just on my pressure altitude that I see here in the pressure altitude column. My performance is based on my density altitude. That's correct. And pressure altitude, or I mean, density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for temperature. So I'm not seeing that on this chart. Okay, time out. Slow down. Take a careful look. We entered with weight, then we went to pressure altitude, and what did we immediately do? We corrected that pressure altitude for, as we slide to the right on our chart, that's right, temperature. So in fact, these numbers that are shown are predicted performance for pressure altitude corrected for temperature. In other words, my density altitude. One other thing to look at before we leave this chart. What if my temperature would have been 25 degrees Celsius? Now, when I look at the chart, I see a column for 20 and I see a column for 30. This is where we were talking about interpolation. Now, there's two things I can do. I can interpolate between the numbers in the 20 degree column and 30 degree column, okay? Or number two, I could just go to the next higher value. So if the temperature actually was 25 and I didn't want to interpolate, I would just bump up to the 30 degree Celsius column. Those numbers 
theoretically should be a little bit larger than the actual performance that I need, and that gives me a, a small safety margin. Okay, so chart method not too tough. So we've got our pressure altitude, air temperature and weight, and oh, oh, wait a minute. What about that 18 knot headwind? Oh, where am I going to calculate for that? Notice it's not on the chart. Well, the answer is we're going to go to the POH, and in chapter 5, we're going to see how Cessna recommends we solve this problem. So here's an excerpt from a Cessna 172 POH, and it shows takeoff, and it shows the wind correction. Notice in the example here, it showed a 12 knot wind divided by 9 times 10%. So here's the formula. The formula is headwind, HW, divided by 9 times 10%, and that is my percent decrease. Okay, that doesn't sound too tough. Let's see if we can make that work. Well, here's my formula. Headwind divided by 9 times 10%. What's my headwind? 18 divided by 9 times 10% is 20%. You got it. Well, 20% decrease. How do I work with that? Again, not too tough. Review this on the ground with your flight instructor. Remember my ground roll of 1,325 feet? Times that by 20%, what do I get? 265. So with a headwind, I am reducing my ground roll by 265 feet. And there you go. 1325 minus 265, I'm going to anticipate eh, right about 1,060 feet. Well, what about my distance over a 50-foot obstacle? Voila, no change. It's just as simple. Same thing. I'm going to take that distance, we got it from the chart, 2,480 times 20%. That's pretty simple. 496. There we are. So I take my 2,480, subtract 496, and my estimated distance over that 50-foot obstacle, eh, about 1,984 feet. So it's very common for pilots just to round up for safety. In this case, with this wind, I might say I would anticipate a ground roll of 1,100 feet, 1,100 feet. I would anticipate being over my 50-foot obstacle at 2,000 feet. You see how I'm just rolling it up to the next round 100? So with that ground roll and that distance over a 50-foot obstacle, what your flight instructor is going to work with you on is what are the runway distances and obstacles at the airport where we are flying? Maybe I have a 4,000 foot concrete runway and I'm going to say to myself, well, 1,100 foot ground roll and oh, maybe 2,000 feet uh, to get over a 50 foot obstacle. I'm only going to be halfway down the runway. That should be a pretty safe takeoff. Thanks to these performance charts that can help me predict what that performance is going to be, I can make safe decisions. That's what my aircraft performance is all about. Safe decision making and a safe flight. Folks, that's it for performance charts. Please join us next time.